Today we have a live industry talk with the team at Good Start Jones. The business was created seven years ago and it has some interesting adventures along the way. Today's talk will provide you with an insider's view of starting your own business and creating an ongoing portfolio. Just when you thought a portfolio would end at the end of final year, no. It's an ongoing live actual delivery, which is your portfolio. The creative design process is global and it's a wonderful opportunity to see and inside a creative business that is native to Wolverhampton. To hear about processes and methodologies and key transferable skills that enable them to adapt from their original direction to another creative pathway. In your final year, a lot of time has been allocated to your portfolio development as it showcases your work to future employees, potential business partners and establishes your brand direction. Today's session will touch on capturing your work and staying true to your brand values. There will be lots of opportunities to answer questions at the end. Um, please feel free to write your questions in the comments section, just in case there's nothing worse that you get to the end and you're like, oh, what was that question? I wanted to ask them. So make sure that you utilize the comment section and we will be going through that at the end. We'll also open up the floor so um, you can answer questions there. Just um, there will be a break in between the presentation, just so you know, it's not going to be like, oh, all this talking, there will be a break in between. So you will be able to have like a little five minute little break, which you can utilize well um, with a little task that they have for you. So without further ado, let me introduce you to Good Start Jones. Hey. Hi. <laughs> OK. Hey, guys. Morning, Hi. everyone. Morning. Um, yeah, so as 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 um, Summer so graciously introduced us. Um, yeah, we are Good Start Jones. Yeah. Um, a a small um, bag, bag manufacturing, manufacturing outfit company. in Wolverhampton, yeah. literally around the corner, yeah. literally around the corner. Um, so yeah, brief insight into who we are, what we do, how we do it, and how it's been for the past what seven years. All right, go ahead. Let's go. So yeah, um, yeah, you can kick things off, Paul. Um, how did it all start? How did it all start? You know what, right? Um, next slide, handsome. Let's see it. It started like this. Um, I was originally I was like um, a footwear designer. I graduated from um, Huddersfield University, uh, same university you did, but just ten years apart, um, real quick. And then um, graduated, um, went into footwear design, got hired straight away. Um, yeah, so um, yeah, learning from the best. Um, I went to Apple. I mean, on the side, they didn't know what I was doing. It's like, I was just, yeah, just there learning, soaking all in how they do business, which was really, it had a really good effect on me. In fact, um, like I was saying, when people actually graduate, get a job, it's just usually like, I'm only doing this for a while, just to bring yeah. a little bit of money in. Yeah. You blink and then 10 years later, you're still doing that. Yeah. <laughs> and then, like, yeah, your side hustle became your main hustle. Yeah, I was not doing that. While I was there, I was, I was, I was thinking the Apple products, but like I was also, um, yeah, plotting my way out of this. Domination <laughs> for real. Yeah, for sure. What's your What's yours one? So for me, um, my name is Anson Carlos Davids. I am a designer here at Good Start Jones. Um, yeah, as Paul mentioned, we both did exactly the same course at university, just ten years apart. Um, uh, for me, I'd wanted to design cars since I was since I was a kid. Um, tailored everything going through school and college towards doing that degree, um, finally got to do it and Dude, I was the same way. Didn't like it. <laughs> I was not the same way like that. <laughs> but I was the same way. You know? Designing cars. Did you like design cars like on like like um, any random bits of paper? Just any, like, anything that a pencil would draw on. It was an addiction. We had the same addiction, bro. Walls. Yeah, it was, books. It was great. It was a good living, man. It was great. I enjoyed it. And then when you get to university, you find other people with the same addiction. Yeah, there's more people like me. And yeah. you just just get on and just exactly. live in tube books. Exactly. It's great. It was a good time, man. But um, yeah, ultimately I fell out of love with it. It was it just it, I don't know, I think I I built it up too much in my head. It wasn't quite what I hoped it would be. Mm -hmm. But um but yeah, I Realized that I didn't want to design cars, but I did want to design things. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, so the journey after that became um, I worked as freelance for about a year, just over a year after I graduated university. 
funnily enough, I actually met Paul randomly in Leicester while I was in my final year. <laughs> yeah. Um, I was like saying, listen, man, everyone was going to the front for uh, what they call it, food, and like only students get to go first. And I'm <laughs> like, oh, I graduated from from Huddersfield years ago. Oh, nuts. <laughs> And then, like, I was like, yo, you, you went to Huddersfield. And like, I was, yeah. I was like, I'm there now. Like, yeah. And we, and we got we just talking. Got talking, yeah. exchanged numbers. And um, I, I kept on, like, hassling him, calling him. And, like, <laughs> for a year, non stop. No, 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 no. Like, I was like, I just really love the guy. I liked his energy. But, um, but yeah, then towards the end of, I think, 2014, Paul pitched me the idea of collaborating on the project. Mm. Um, I said, yes. Um, and yet, I mean, long story short, I've been here ever since. It's been, yeah, it's been an interesting, a, a interesting number of years. Ups and downs. Ups and downs. Hopefully more ups than downs. Yeah, but it's, but it's, I was saying, the ups are good. You know what I'm saying? I suppose we're still here. Yeah, we're still here. We're, we're still, still doing here. it. We're, we're still, still growing. It's, it's been fantastic. Next slide, Hudson. Okay, now becoming with Start Jones. I mean, yeah, this woman right here, she was more enthusiastic than I was at the start of it. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? It basically, long story short, um, yeah, I was in Apple, but like I graduated from there because like I, my plan actually came into fruition. Um, I decided to actually create and design bags since I'm already a, a bag accessories designer. Well, therefore, well, I'll design my own range of bags. Yeah, basically, the two jobs I've combined them into one, and I thought, you know, I'll design um, my own bags. Yeah, I'll just to actually pay off the 40k debt that I actually cooped <laughs> when I failed. And I'm like, right, I'll buy the bags wholesale, but then I couldn't find a wholesaler bags that I liked so at the price that I wanted. So I thought, right, I'll design my own and make them. And so I was looking for a manufacturer to actually make what I wanted. I couldn't find anything. No one could actually make it. So I thought, you know what, I'll design my own bag and make it myself, but it has to be really simple. At that point, still, I did not know how to sell. But like, you know what, I just thought, I'll just do it. I'll just, just get up and just make a start of my own thing yeah. and um, so I did start making my own bags and designing and developing bags and um, yeah I think um, how can I put it um, I learned as I was going along I got some notes here I had some um, do, 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 do. Um, yeah yeah I basically learned from my previous mistakes yeah. Yeah, yeah it's always I think that's probably one of the common things for both of us like we've we've both had different journeys, weirdly ended up in the yeah. same place, but... The it's... difference though, I was a reluctant entrepreneur. I did not want to do this. Well, I, I, was, I think I was, I was a reluctant car designer. Yeah. So, I mean... <laughs> we did things that we didn't want to do, but it ended up really cool. But again, like we both ended up yeah. sort of I mean, finding the right path. Yeah, I think the whole point is you have to be flexible. You know I mean, it's Very like you, yeah. you might have a defined path that you want to take, yeah. but you'll get there by, there's not a direct route there. Sometimes you just have to actually be flexible in your approach. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And use it as stepping stones. And um, that's basically it really. Next slide, please. Have Which to... leads us on to the sort of, the things that help. This sort of built the foundations for the it, mindset it that we did, have. It did, didn't it? How... Because like, um, wait, 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 wait. Just before you change that slide, just before mm -hmm. you double, it kind of like the quotes did help us to actually build our mindset. Because like yeah. all the mistakes, um, like the beginning slide where I says you win or you learn, mm -hmm. I learned a lot. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I learned a lot and then from the learning I actually knew what I'm not going to do mm -hmm. and it actually defined how we act as a business to this day. Yeah. Go for it, Hanson. Okay, um, start where you are, use what you have and um, do what you can. It's kind of like, um, how can I put it? It's like, like I was saying about quotes, I mean, I'm not sure if you guys know, but like, um, hopefully everyone can see this. I'm not sure if there's still a delay, but um, yeah, if the, it will kill, kill up here eventually. Yeah, I mean, the reason, the reason why we have like three quotes that we live by is because like um, it builds values into a business. Wherever yeah. business you're starting from, how big or small, you'll always need values because your values define how you make choices in business and make decisions, it just makes it easy to actually follow. For example, Google, they have um, they have a mantra, they have a motto, they have they have a phrase that they use to define their business when they started, um, which was do don't do evil. Yeah, don't be evil. Yeah, don't be, don't be evil. evil. I, 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 we always I laugh at this because I'm like, what kind of company do you need to always be remembered 
Yeah, don't to be remind evil. them not to be evil. Yeah. <laughs> it was like ours is not don't, don't be evil though. But like um, we use the quotes that like we use for our experiences. So like start where you are, use what you have, and do what you can. So basically, how did I actually phrase this, Hansen? Um, so yeah, our next quote. Um, no, I'm going to finish with the first one. You want to finish with the first one? Yeah, okay. the first one was really good. Okay, okay. Because like, what I was explaining was like, you don't have to have much. When I first started, I didn't have anything. I didn't know how to sew, didn't know how to um, have a stitch or anything going on. But like, I just started with what I had. What I did have was passion. I had a belief in myself and had an idea. And I just developed the idea from like, okay, so I've got an idea how to actually make a bag. I'll just, I'll just do it. I'll just make a start on it. Um, I'll teach myself. And so I have to give myself the time. Well, yeah, you, know, you don't need much to make a start. You just have to make a start. And also, it doesn't matter um, what you have or what you use. Um, be skilled. Um, just start where you are because what you have is time. And over time, you'll develop that skill into something else. And then um, all you do is um, use what you have available. Use the tools. So it could be um, the actual sewing machine you have currently. It could be the friends and family you have, that's your contacts, or um, you'll find that you'll just get resources along the way. You know, um, I like to actually always say that, like, you just learn as you go along. And um, yeah, for, for example, your tutor yourself, you might actually get a, a project where you learn to make a shirt. You know, that one shirt you learned, that's a great starting point. You can put that up on Facebook and say, hey, um, everybody, I know how to make shirts. Anyone want to actually pay me so they can get a custom shirt? Mm -hmm. You might get orders, and like those orders are basically them paying you how to learn, mm -hmm. you know? And so that's a start. That's a business right there. You've got a customer and you gain money. Yeah. Um, that's a good one by Alpha Hash. I'll live by that. Go for it. Um, yeah, again, there might be a bit of a delay with the quote coming up, but it says um, talent is good, practice is better, passion is best. Now, uh, yeah, this is this is an interesting one to think about because you'd think that all three of those are important, but and they are. But again, when it comes to, particularly for self-employment, without passion, like it's it's very difficult. I mean, yeah, <laughs> if you, you don't to, believe in what you're doing, is, it's it's a hard. I mean, road. if you don't have passion, well, what's going to happen is you got order of like over 200 bags and 100 bags mm -hmm. and you've got to finish it within a set time mm -hmm. and like you're running up to the close to the clock it's passion that keeps you going all night to actually yeah. get it done yeah you can have all the talent you can have practiced for 10 years straight but if you're not passionate about what you're making or, or producing for someone it's it's hard yeah it's hard or it's kind of like you can all have all the passion no wait 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 you can have all the talents and be really good on like the sewing or be a really good designer. But what you find is it's the passionate people that yeah. actually go on stick it out. To stick yeah. it out and just be just just skyrocket. You know what I mean? It's like look, look, I did not know how to sew, but my friend that taught me how to sew, she was better than me, but she never stuck it out. You know what I mean? I kept on it because I was just passionate what I'm doing. She was passionate, she became passionate at something else. It's one of the reasons why I named like this, this section about sort of my background that the um, that the dream never dies because even though yes the dream was car design and as Paul mentioned you kind of have to be flexible, um, the dream became design mm -hmm. in whatever form that took and the year that I did um, I worked freelance I worked on some weird and wacky stuff that I didn't yeah. believe in that weren't my projects but it taught me that really once you have a grasp of design. You, you can do whatever you want. Yeah. The the process doesn't really change whether you design a washing machine or a garden fence. Like it's the same process. You just have to um, have an intense enthusiasm. Exactly. Exactly. As long as you're passionate and you believe in it, it's fine. You can do it. Also, keep on continuing learning. You know what I mean? That's how you actually do better. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Never learning. never believe that you that you know everything. Yeah. Um, yeah, we get thrown some weird and wacky ideas on a daily basis and just when we thought we knew everything about bags. You never saw the one that came up this morning though, did you? No. Alright, we'll talk we'll talk later. <laughs> Another one. <laughs> it, was a, it was a good one. Anyway. Hey, doing it though. Alright, cool. Um this one's my favorite one. Um 
by rapper slash actor comment is really cool. And then like, you know, me, I just coined it, which is slow motion is better than no motion. It's like, um, I've learned patience. The reason why my, I mean, I used to listen to this song a lot and it just grinded into my head, like for years and years, it was my favorite song of all. But like, it is true, slow motion is way better than slow motion. It's like, um, it's patience. The reason why my, my first business failed was because I was manufacturing in, I was designing it in America and like uh, manufacturing in England and then like um, well, doing developments in England and then all for Singapore it was actually being made. It was like, it was a disaster. You know what I mean? Like I was only doing that because I was in a rush to like, you know what I mean? You're in your thirties, you have to actually make a certain amount of money. You have yeah, to be really good as possible. Yeah, so it's like slow motion basically. It's like, there should be a patient. There should not be a rush. In my, yeah. in my period, not rush to actually get rich. It should be like, just enjoy the journey, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? And, and take your time. I mean, break things down into like little chunks. It doesn't have to be, you know, yeah, yeah. all at once. Slow it down. I mean, we've built this business by bit, year by year, to the point where it's, it's strong, it's, it's a foundation. It's like, it would be a little bit hard to actually break it down unless someone told us we can't use wood anymore. It's illegal. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, why? <laughs> no more fabric. It's no always fabric. illegal. So much. Yeah, it's you know illegal. <laughs> <laughs> then, then, we're, then we're screwed. But like, other than that, we really built it up. But also, it's a, it's a reminder to oneself that you should not compare yourself to others. Your time will not pass you by. <laughs> Slowly. 100%. Build it and enjoy it as you go along. Step by step. Small baby steps. Yeah, sadly, jealousy, jealousy has killed a lot of businesses, to be honest. Yeah, sadly. I'll say that. And, and people want, yeah, because people watch an elbow of people. Too, particularly in, this, in the world of, you know, social media that we live in, mm. everyone is posting everything that they're doing online. And it's, it's hard not to get jealous sometimes. You're thinking, wait, you how know do you do that? You Why know what, you're right. right. You, you are right. But, I, but yeah. I, you know, I, yeah. I, I mean, there's a reason why we don't actually do Instagram as much as we did. It's because we just don't have the time for it. You know, it's like, for me anyway, I don't need to be validated by everyone's opinion. We already know we do. We do, we do what we do anyway. But like, and sometimes we're just too busy to actually pick up the phone and just like, hey, just, yo, know, yeah, do it cheesy. 30, so, 40 minutes making it. However, you know what? It is good because like, you know, like, people decided to follow us for a reason. So we have to try out something, right? Mm -hmm. But like, we are really open. Um, I think the world would be a happier place if we're, um, we didn't have to gain validation from everybody else. Everyone, yeah, true. Insta. True. But true. you know what, I ain't gonna say. Slow motion being a normal motion. Exactly. All right, like this, like this lecture. Come on, man. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so yeah, that leads us quite nicely onto the, how our sort of, what would you call it? This the is flagship, basic, the staple. This was basically the original series generation. What is it? Three. This is Mark three. Mark, Mark three. two and one, we do not talk about. Yeah, 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 yeah. We, that's, we, that's, we can't show you those. Classified. So, <laughs> well, basically, I'll tell you, I was using, before this, um, this was where we was actually getting the aesthetics and was using the right material selection on these ones, where um, before I was like, yo, wood, leather, like a car. It's going to look fantastic. Because like, I'll tell you how it went down. I told my mom, um, right, I'm going to leave my job. I'm going to focus on like making my own bags. And she's like, what? what's going to make your bags different from anybody else? I'm like, well, I'm, I'm going to put wood on it. And then my sister jumped on and was like, wood on a bag. And I'm like, well, yeah, it, it's, I need to actually make a brand name for myself, a name and like a concept. So she's like, no, nah, that's, that's crazy. You know what I mean? But, <laughs> <laughs> He's crazy now though. <laughs> <laughs> oh, how many hundreds sold? So, um, but yeah, basically it was just the motivation. I used that negativity or that doubt as motivation to actually push me on. And so like generation one, two pieces of wood and, um, and leather. And I didn't know how to sew. Slow motion, bend and no motion. I started stapling. I was stapling wood and leather together. Uh, interestingly enough, it looked kind of eye. People actually did like it. <laughs> the concept, but it, you know, it was too heavy. So like, yeah, um, I'll say the second generation, I the second one, I started to learn how to sew. And it was getting better. And then like, these are like me thinking, these are these needs, I'm there, it's perfect, it's fantastic. And then believe it or not, people were buying those. Um, I sold them at 35 pounds a pop, sometimes 40, you know, um, like I said, it's like, I'll say, hey, I've got some bags, do you want one? 
I'll get orders and then I'll use that order like you know, um, to actually go buy the fabric, make it, and then you know what I mean they'll pay me when I deliver it the rest. Mm -hmm. And it was quite good, really. It was a it was a small little business going. For them, they wasn't really bothered about the construction. It was more about the concept as a the whole. The concept yeah. as a whole yeah. worked yeah. and it yeah. did work. And so you don't have to be perfect, just have to be confident in what you're doing and just make a start. And you know what? You'll find that um, You'll find your niche when you put it out there, and people actually pick those up. To me, I thought they were the suckers, but if I can, <laughs> it kind of worked out still. still. But like you know, in, um, it really did help me. Keep how about the out. how about the soapbox days? Yeah, the soapbox days. Yeah, those um, the soapbox days. I was doing it on the soapbox because uh, I was a brand new business and I never had sales credibility. So I went there and says, guys, I've got this idea for a backpack. You guys in? They like that concept, so I started using it and selling it under them. However, the salt box died, so um, they they disbanded, and I'm like, okay, they wanted the bags, but well, I was the only one making them, and they never paid anything for you know, they never sold a stitch, and they never paid anything for development. So um, I got to keep it, and so with that, I had to actually figure out, right, I'm on my own. I need to start a brand name. I need to start a brand. I need to do something, you know. So you've got a bag. No name, no brand, no, brand. no website, no website, no shop, no nothing, just a bag, just a bag, and it was and it looked like that. You know what I'm <laughs> <laughs> I don't know Sem semi stapled, yeah. semi sewn. Yeah, I was, I was still passionate about it. I still believed it, man. I still had debts to pay. Remember that point? <laughs> so I'm like, yo, I'm, I'm gonna do this, and I still had to prove my system wrong. Right? You know what I mean? so, so that leads us quite nicely onto. There we go. Um, yeah, again, there might be a bit of a delay, but, but yeah. Yeah, so what is this on now? What this is, on? what does Good Start Jones mean? What does How, Good where, Start Jones? Where did the name come from? How did it come to be? Okay, well, I'll tell you where it came from. Basically, long story short, um, it's basically a mantra. So it's a mantra to remind myself, um, make a good start, Jones. Basically, I remember when I was at, um, in, my, in my early days of P, and like the PE master, he would like give me a good kicking, really. Um, come on, Jonesy, make a good start. Come on, and it kind of like it kind of got me. It's like yo, it stayed with me. Good, but like um, it's basically um, it's a match to myself to actually do the right thing and um, and and make sure even though you're making a good start, make sure it's a, it's going to be the right one. You know what I mean? And not to rest on the laurels. Yeah. It's like, for instance, like the actual logo there itself, the line, it actually represents the starting, finishing line, the starting line. Mm -hmm. And like uh, back in the day, they'll buy the bags of flour from the flour mill. The flour was always like had some husk, a little bit dirty, a little bit of rock sometimes. You know, so like they'll come, the customers will complain to the mom and pops, they'll say, hey, can we get anything better? Mom and pops will actually take some flour of that. They'll actually sieve it, do all the hard work. So now it's filtered, refined, pure fat flour. And like they'll brand it. They'll brand that bag saying, look, they guarantee the quality. Mm -hmm. they, it was a promise that this is the best flour that they're going to buy. Now it gives them an option. And I feel like so far, brands kind of like get away from the promise because they don't actually <laughs> do you know, good products sometimes, or they actually don't do what they say they're probably supposed to do. But yeah, that, anyways, for me, I just wanted to take it back and put my name on it. If I'm going to do anything, well, then I'm, I'm, I'm going to stand by it. Yeah. But yeah, that's what the good start Jones means. Is. So, um, so yeah, so we've covered the, um, the background, the build up, mm -hmm. the, the, the mantras, the, the sayings, the phrases. So what does all that mean? Well, basically, it actually defines us as a business. So like we've got all that and now we've built our foundation of who we are. And now we know the direction and the mindset we actually want to take ourselves. You know what I mean? It's like it, now that we know how to actually um, make decisions, as I want to say. So I feel like this is what um, we can do. So now we are in this stage where whew, we've gone past the staples now and now we yeah. developed it. <laughs> We safe, developed I can safely it. say there's no staples there's in the There's no staples here. It's like how I actually became into uh, this part was like, uh, remember, I, I went basically, quick story. I was um, still working at home, building my own bags, getting that thing, and it got kind of out of hand. And, had a, and I was still going off to actually go to work and design bags. So I thought I'll find myself a local factory, found one in Wolverhampton, Zahid. He actually made some bags. 
I called him up. He says, hey, I says, hey, I'm a designer. I've got these bags I need to make it. He's like, you're a designer? I'm like, yeah. And he's like, well, come on through and let's, uh, let's have a talk. I'm looking for a designer. Oh, really? Cool. So I go off to his factory the next day, pack all my bags up and, and, and meet him at his factory, go all the way up his stairs, got three flights of stairs I've got to go up in his factory, get there, we sit down, he tells me, um, he's got three kids, uh, one's a doctor, one's a pharmacist, and the other one, um, he's um, graduating to go on to become a doctor himself. And then, um, so no one's going to take over the business, do I actually want in, you know, show me the ropes and he'll help develop the bag. And I said, yeah, let's do it. And so um, with that, I start, I quit my both of my and I just started working as a full-time bag designer. And he was showing me the ropes, how the business works, how to actually design and manufacture bags for other businesses and individuals whilst developing this bag. And that's where the rivets come from. It's like staples, no good. We'll, we'll, we'll start again. And he helped me develop this look. You know literally, I mean? literally being paid to learn. Being paid to learn, literally. <laughs> you know what I mean? I got paid good to actually learning how to develop and manufacture other people's bags. And that's mm -hmm. the difference from that job where it was like we send the bags over to Singapore or something. We, uh, we actually just did it in house. And that's where I learned most of how to actually operate as a business and most of how to actually operate as myself um, doing this job, you know? But yeah, from that, we actually learned how to actually get to um, what is it, the results of the work. We defined our USP from here. Um, we started using our own style where we had military influences. That was our style that we had to do. The material selection was really crazy on this point. Yeah, as you can see, the bags have changed a lot over the years. I mean, how between the the, the first images you showed of the ones you were yeah. stapling, how many how many years are we talking? We're talking about three, four I'll years. Say, this now? I'll say slow motion band and no motion was doing it for. Whew, I'll say four years. I'll say four years now. No, wait. That, that period was basically a year. Then we took a, a, a few years to actually get it right, and then we started putting it out like this. But I'd say basically, so, so yeah, really we're looking at about two years. Two, two, years. two, three years worth of no, development. No, 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 not three. Two. Two years Definitely of development two. to get to the point of no staples, yeah. no glue, yeah. the back to sewing. It was out. instantly, when I actually started with working with Zahid, staples weren't allowed, man. That was just like, <laughs> staples were out there. That was like, you don't need those. <laughs> I mean, and we spent about three months just finding the right person to actually, right manufacturers to give us the screws. And so like the screws now, they come from Germany, you know, um, that's where we were getting them from. And then it just changed the whole game, you know, and so we can actually manufacture uh, better. It's like, like working underneath Zahid and working for Zahid, it showed me how to actually do production. Like it was only at the time, it was just like two of us, me and him, and we're putting out hundreds of bags each week. You know, for the businesses and individuals, and these bags were complicated. So it's like it showed me how to actually do production and do mass manufacturing. Only just two of us. You know, I mean, ten over hundreds of thousands each year. So like, um, but like, it actually made me um, work on my own skill. And from doing hundreds of bags, that's how I was able to actually improve on the quality. You know, I mean, it's like what. 10,000 hours to become a master. Yeah. I mean, he literally was like my, my master's degree. Mr. Miyagi. Yeah, he taught me how. So I was like, I feel like um, that's how I actually developed it in terms of like the qualities there. Now that we've got. And so. On it, it's a bit more utilitarian. So, like, using our um, army influences where things do more than one thing. Um, it actually kind of helps us um, get there, really. So yeah, so now after all the learning and the refinement of the products, mm -hmm. we've now got to the point where... I've got to do this again, aren't I? The video is not I'm not going to play the video. Oh, no, wait. Oh, Joe. No, click onto that one. Yeah, there we go. So we got to the point where we actually know more about our products. And so, like, we can start playing around um, with more aesthetics of it, material selection. For example, this cream on, great, yeah. So um, now we know more about our customer. We can actually start working more on our USP and define things and go in. So we can play with the wood. Here we've actually got like images where we can engrave in the wood. We can put stickers on the wood, do heat transfers on the wood, paint the wood straight up black or any other color. Um, we've actually started using different textiles here. We've got like camo camouflage 
Yeah, right, which is interestingly enough our bestseller. Um, and is someone preparing for war? I don't know. What would you like? Um, <laughs> but anyway, but like, um, and then here, the cream bag here, it's an example of the, uh, one of our stages where we're, we we want to actually go into a little bit of more luxury now mm-hmm. that we've got the skills up and the materials and the, and the, and the, oh, the tools really. It's, and, it's, it's an interesting point that, you know, once you've got that sort of that foundation laid, mm-hmm. like we know the woods that work as a bag, so mm-hmm. we don't have to worry about, oh, will that fit, will this attach, or that kind of thing. You can stand on top of that foundation and just experiment with materials and prints and colours and that kind of thing, because we know the base is set, yeah. like it's fine, it works. You can play a bit up. So it's can, like, you know, get weird and wacky colours. Like that one, um, the luxury of authenticity, I called it, where we're actually playing around with like, um, kind of more like um, canvas and levers, Mm-hmm. And things that complement the wood, like even the gubbings and like the fastenings, which is real metal. So it gives it a nice, nice it complements it, it, makes it real luxurious. Even the lining is like uh, microfiber and like mm-hmm. wool we use, and it just feels so good. So, like, um, just actually selecting the right materials for this is um, a paid off, you know. Uh, let's move on, Hanson, to how we do it now. So, now that we've got a little bit of foundation. Um, oh, I'm not really. sure if people want to see that one. Now there is a video on this one that I'm really hoping it plays. Okay, cool. Go for it. You have to actually select that. that. Whatever. They're good. Someone's going to order it. So yeah, so this is a bag that was done relatively recently actually. It was only not too long ago. Mm-hmm. Um, it, was a, it was a gift for... Um, it was a birthday present. It was a birthday present for for a customer's wife, I believe. Yeah. Um, um, we we charge. We can. I'm just happy that we can actually now charge a premium price. Yeah. These these are are not simple bags to make in terms of they're, they're designed cleverly to make it simple to use. So that there's no barriers in terms of getting into it. Mm-hmm. Um, it's it's a relatively straightforward bag in terms of usability. But its construction is quite complex. Yeah. Um, Again. So, Paul originally mentioned that you were charging 35, 40 pounds back in the day. Yeah. Yeah. That 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 doesn't happen anymore. Yeah. We we, we um, charge hundreds, yeah, hundreds you, now. It was yeah. yeah that's, hundreds. That's, it's like we, those, we, this was like a, yeah a 300 pound bag, you know, and it, and it worked out quite nice for it. And he was happy to pay that. To be honest, he thought you should. We he, he wanted to pay more. You know, so he was gone. He he got to see bits that most people don't because he was he was there. He was in the time. room while we were sort of constructing it. Yeah. Um, so he got to see the amount of work that goes into producing the bag mm-hmm. and yeah, the price wasn't an issue. Yeah. Once yeah. he saw the level of work and craftsmanship, it was yeah. Yeah, again it's like like I was saying on the can on the cream bag that was shown. Um it's the luxury of authenticity using kind of materials that just complement the wood and just and that and like this one it's using um what are they called We're using silver now what is it um the silver, silver screw. same as the black ones are just just yeah silver it steps up the game man it steps up the game but then that's just band building it's a part of building brand all right let's next oh we are talking about building brand let's go but we're going to have a bit of a, we're going to have a short five minute break here we're going to pose the question the next section is going to be about sort of building brand but we're going to pose the question um what sort, of, what sort of brands do you guys consider to be strong and why? Um, so yeah, we're going to have a quick five minute break that you think about um, the brands that you guys like um, and the reasons why you like them, why you think they're strong, and then we'll come back and discuss. Hi guys, that's, that's been a great presentation so far. I feel quite, uh, quite inspired. I've, I've got some names, but I think I should probably wait for the students to uh, throw some some into the mix. Does anybody want to take the lead and, and just uh, throw some names out there? Uh, Claire's, Claire Beely. Desigual. Desigual, okay. Okay, interesting one. Okay. Which one's that? It's, um, it's a Spanish, Spanish brand, I believe. Yeah. And, and any reason why? I just love the the originality of their clothes and 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 I just love it. Always mm-hmm. have done. Okay. Okay. Anybody else want to throw any names out there? Alima, I see your hand. 
I need glasses because I can't I can't see that far. <laughs> Alima, your microphone's still muted. No, that was. <laughs> I don't know why I keep pressing that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Alima, you're just killing me. So you've got no brand. You can't even think of a brand. Oh, I think of a brand. Uh, I, I just love Valentino myself personally. Uh, I love dresses. I love garments, uh, jackets. Uh, the way they just so classic and uh, the flow of them. Um, yeah. I'm also, yeah, it's more towards, I, I'm the dressmaker myself personally. I, and, Design my own garments uh, if I and then make them, and uh, now more so uh, the techniques what you can do, which you see, did you use manage to use? Well, but, you can see that you're going to have lots of good questions at the end. So yeah. save your questions to the end, and we're going to now start again. The presentation right so yeah so as, as we mentioned before we're going to um we want to talk about building the brand and um yeah the kind of things that after going through our sort of history build up the the um the mottos and mantras that that we use to make our decisions and decide on what direction to take the business um how does that inform the actual building of the brand and the message that the customers see from us. Yeah, because actually it's like we became really clear on our target audience. Um, for example, it's like, you remember when I was telling you about having brand values mm -hmm. and it helps you define where you want to go. Um, in 2017, we've got a collaboration deal offer from um, a company called Rizzler. If you're not familiar with Rizzler, um, that's tobacco paper. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I yeah. mean, it was a good deal, um, but did we take it, Hanson? Uh, no, no, we did not. Oh, um, <laughs> it was. It, we we know who we are. Though. Exactly, and that's. I was, I was going to say that it's one of those because of the values that we had we had built the business on. Um, neither Paul or myself, neither of us smoke. Um, it just it wouldn't have been a good fit. It's not how we really wanted to represent the brand. It's not the kind of tie that we wanted to have mm. um and it, it would have been a collaboration that would have tied it wasn't just a case of oh we can work together and it was literally the tech pack of all like their their marketing material and how it's going to be and it was like yeah it's the youthful brand and you saw like i think what i found was funny was like like this couple yeah, yeah, this young boy and girl on them lying on um on the roof of a Citroen 2 CV. Yeah, yeah, and like just just like sharing a moment with like the, the paper and that, and look really nice and, and glossy. And I'm like, that that's not real. Anyway, it's crazy. I, I went out here. I was driving on my way home. You know, yeah, the traffic lights so and we see the bus stop, right? Bus stop. There was a guy with a little tin of Rizzler, rolling old guy as well, with a beard and looking raggedy, rolling up his, uh, his his paper there with the Rizzler. I'm like, yeah, that's 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 the real, that's the real Rizzler. That's right the there. reality. So like, yo, know, we are not going to be used like that. No, and like, but we know what who we are. We know we're bad, and you know who knows us? Our customers. I mean, we now got to this point where without them, really, it's like. Um, how we did that, we defined our USP. We know what we're about. Um, we created a clear band message. And most importantly, we actually got to know our audience. Mm -hmm. And like the audience we know, they would not appreciate that nonsense. So, <laughs> but I did actually hit them back. I did hit them back and say, you know what? If you got any, we'll make some bags for you, but not a good start, Jones. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I am an entrepreneur after all, man. You know what I mean? There's a business opportunity. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> if anyone's going to make bags for this, you know what I mean? I'll make them. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'll take the money. You know what I mean? But that's how it goes. But yeah, you define your own brand. But like, you know what, right? People, uh, other brands that have a clear brand message, um, what is it? No, it's not that one. Um, yeah, like so even some of the some of the brands that you mentioned, it'd be interesting to get, um, maybe we can save the questions for the end or comments for the end, but um, interesting to get or markets or whatever it just interesting thought no pressure but yeah if you have any 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 feedback on that it'd be interesting to yeah 
to see if you have any knowledge on it. All right, well, let's go into this one because this is a really good statement, which I feel like knowing who we are as well. I know we never included this comment or this quote in our um, in our first one about like how we live, but I feel like we do it anyway. Uh, here we go. Tell them, Hanson. So yeah, quality is the best business plan. That's from John Lasseter, who is the former CEO of, of Pixar. Um, yeah, it's 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 a powerful statement when you think that very few people or businesses write a, a sort of a principle of quality into their business plan. It's always about you know, market share and growth and and that side of it. But if you think as as a, as a customer, if you're buying a product, the one thing or one of the things that everyone wants is quality. And if we don't get that, we generally complain or send it back. Like that's just just how we are. But it's but to write that as part of a business plan mm. or to have that as at the forefront of a plan is is very powerful. It's very right. So I mean, not all businesses actually have um, the focus on quality on their business plan. True. It's like some of them. It's just like they just want to get the product out. Yeah, and then, you know what I mean, they'll deal yeah. with like the negativity or the backlash. Yeah. You know what I mean, they do not live by slow motion is better than no motion. Yeah. For them, it's called fast fashion and they'll get it out as fast as it can. And then they'll deal with the consequences, whatever. Yeah, fix it later. You know what I mean, they'll yeah. fix it later or, you know, I mean, the, the complaints. But like, you know, I mean, you don't build a business like that. You know what I mean, unless you've got a lot of capital where you can actually yeah. deal with the negativity yeah, and the true. backlash. But like a really good product, um, a really good business plan. Um, biz quality is always the business, is always the best business plan. Now I feel like we have that, you know, we yeah, live by that to be honest. It wasn't necessarily something that was like written down on paper as part of the plan, but it kind of just it became, became the plan. Like it was, and now it's almost a no compromise plan. Like yeah. it's just, yeah, yeah we'll, I mean, let, we'll explain more, but it's. For example, but yeah. it's all about, setting rules to live by that govern your life um it really does help make decisions and um, i think there's no, i ain't gonna lie but like pixar man they do the best films <laughs> <laughs> and, it, and, I, and, it, and it can tell why if that actually have, yeah. if that's their motto. yeah if that's what they believe you can you can understand why you know but again off the, off the point you just mentioned like word of mouth is crazy important like it yeah. can literally make or break your brand like if you if you're at the point where you can negative comments mm. right. bad press can crush you but it's also about um being proud proud of what you're doing yeah, that, yeah. That, that him john lester right there he's got pride of ownership you yeah. know, to actually say that you know in quality is the best business plan yeah you know, he has pride of ownership. He is proud of what he's creating. There's nothing that he'll put out that he's not proud of because yeah. it's not quality. He, you know what I mean? So, um, yeah, let's move on to the next one. But with that being how, said, yeah, onto our values. Do. What do we believe? Uh, do this again. Okay. All right. Let's so, um, this I can explain right here. Long story short, uh, we had a custom order. Um, it was a yellow duffel bag, and I was so happy with it. I was like, yo, this girl is going to love this bag. I just finished making it. You know what I mean? It's like she, ha she ordered it with a print on it, and I was like, you know, it's the only one that it was the first one that got ordered with a print. Usually it's like they just buy it off the website and it, we send it out. So this one, I wanted to be extra special before I packed it. So long story short, I got the iron out. And started steaming it, just like get the crease out before I put it into the box real nice. And then like, well, let me show you the video. Let's show them the video, Hanson. Hopefully, hopefully the videos are playing. Yep. This is what happened when you steam it. You might think it's fine. You can iron it out. No, I just don't ironed it out and it shrunk it. You know what I'm saying? Really, it's supposed to look like this. Yeah. Like perfect, smooth, ideal for this. Not a wrinkle in sight, but that's what it's not supposed to look like when you iron it. I basically over steamed this one, and so I had to unpick it from a bag and redo it again so I can get this. So, um, yeah, annoying, right? Okay, handsome. <laughs> so, yeah, um, yeah, as you can see, um, we could have just sent that out. We could have thought, you know what, 
um, we'll we'll sew it up, we'll put it together, we'll stretch out as much as possible, and they'll they'll never know the difference. Yeah. The print's going to be on it; it'll be fine. But but. No. We we have values now. We have values. And like just um, like John Lester says, quality is the best display. Exactly. And like you know what I mean? It's like having a oh, I've got a rule where if I'm not happy or proud to own it myself, it won't leave yeah, the workshop. Leave. Nothing will leave the workshop if it's like not right. Mm -hmm. So like um we did it again. You know, it did take it did cost money. In terms of the time, I had to do it and, and send it out. And to be honest, she could have, I could have got away with it, you know. And says, no, yeah. that's, how, that's how it's supposed to look. But like, um, <laughs> it's the crinkle look. Yeah, it's the crinkle look. It's like it's a little bit crinkly, but it's fine. You'll love it. You know what I mean? But like, uh, and it was only the one side as well. But you know what? Um, I just did it. I just can't live like that. I mean, having a set of rules that govern and help you make decisions, it was a no-brainer. Do it again. Yes, it's going to cost me time. Yes, it's going to cost me additional money. Yes, we've got other orders that we have to send out. But you know what? Quality is the best business plan. And I guarantee you, when she got that bag, I see it all over Facebook. She tags us on Instagram when she's out with it. And she's out with it a lot. She's proud to own it. And that makes me proud that I did a good job. And, yeah. it, and sometimes it's, it's beyond the money, which did annoy me at <laughs> the time, but it's beyond the money. But you know, what? I'm really happy that actually took the time to unpick it. Yeah. We make a whole new panel and do it. You know why? I learned something that day. I learned how to actually work faster and get it done. So it was that, fun. And you know, going back to the word of mouth point, mm. um, just as bad press can break your brand, good press can make it. Oh, she's very popular. She would and, have like just aired herself. And she, because that, because. <laughs> Because of the time spent on that bag and the quality of how it turned out, like she will rant and rave about that bag until the cows come home. Yeah. And yeah. it's a good thing to know. It's a good. It's it's a nice feeling to have to know that your work is appreciated and someone else. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, do you want to explain first or should I just play the video? Wait, I'll explain. Okay. okay. <laughs> I had to, yeah, okay, stand back, stand back. All right, I had to, um, long story short, I didn't mess up this time. This time I didn't mess up. This time I did something right. I made two, basically, I made two um, laptop sleeves on eBay where we, we, um, we made custom laptop sleeves. So if you've got a laptop sleeve or a key, uh, what's it called? iPad. iPad laptop we'll, kind of thing. Yeah. yeah, we'll like make you a custom laptop sleeve. No one else does that service on eBay mm -hmm. but us. You know what I mean? That's how entrepreneurial we are. So <laughs> an opportunity and we took it. Anyway, long story short, I did them right. I made it right, but I wasn't quite happy with it yet. I thought, you know what? Let me just test something. And here it goes. I'll play the, vi play the video I had some kids. How does it? Yeah, yeah, I have no idea why I actually made two, but I'm just really annoyed. Like, well, I'm not perfectionist. It's just that I want to make something that someone's going to like, right? But like my issue is I just don't want to get it returned. I have a high rate of no one sending back returns, right? And it's because I'm a bit obsessive with like the details. Yeah, I like stitches is perfect. But like my only problem was, was like, me and I've got a laptop sleeve, right? I just want it super padded. I'm just obsessed with that. But then it's like having something this compact is quite nice. But then I don't know. This one's sticking to it. It's nice. It will form to the bag. I mean the um tablet. I'm just not sure right now. It's um oh, decisions, decisions. Yeah, I think I'm gonna go with this one. This one's this one, this one's gonna go with this one. There you go. It'll be interesting to know. Um Branson, which one would you go for? Um, I'd probably go for the thicker one. You go for the thicker one too. What well, about you, Simon? The thicker one. She said the thicker one. <laughs> yeah. You know what? Two, there we go. The we, there we go. So I did something right. You know what? It's values, how you solve the problem. Basically, the first one that I made was fine. It would have been good. However, there's something in me that was like, you know what? What if I was receiving this? And you know, you have to sometimes put yourself in the customer's shoes. I mean, like I put here, this is a customer care issue in terms of there was no problems, 
it's just you just care about them you know and like i guarantee you this it's like that customer we got five stars man they really love that they really love that bag Uh, we'll have to show you the review later well, um, basically, um, I just wanted to actually over deliver. Sometimes it's really good to over deliver on your brand, not because like you're showing it, it's just because you care about your brand too. And like, hopefully they will when they receive it. Also, I plan for the longevity. So yeah, I could have sent the slimmer one out. There was nothing wrong with the slimmer one, but like, you know, over time it could just like lose its squishiness and its paddiness and it's just gone. So like uh, having something squishy, well at least it's gonna last longer than um than than the, the the slimmer one version. And then also you focus on the details, just being a little bit of a perfectionist there. I don't know, but like they'll appreciate that. And then obviously think about the customer. Um, interesting point on on over delivery. We actually had a customer call the workshop after she'd DM'd us on Instagram, emailed and then proceeded just to call us yeah. to complain that she didn't feel that she had paid enough for the quality of laptop sleeve that she received. I can't remember if it was this one. Yeah. But... No, it wasn't this one. It was basically, this one was, that one was when she ordered from the website and like, okay. had yeah. like yeah, shoulder yeah, yeah, yeah. straps and everything. She couldn't believe it. it's like the quality, the the look. It's like, mate, I've, I've done you out of it. I've done you out she, of the she cost. Thought, she thought she'd robbed us. <laughs> You're charging too low, mate. I and can't we had to reassure, like, no, it's fine. Like, that's the price. That's 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 what they cost. Like, oh, yeah. just, uh, this but... is stuff we can pay like forty quid. What? what <laughs> why are you selling it for for twenty? Like, yeah, it's like, well, I, I mean, from that, I think I put the price up, didn't I? But, uh, fiber, <laughs> but you know what? It she was, gave us license to put the price. She gave up, us the but... license, but just to actually have that feedback, actually, yeah. it was really good, especially yeah. at the start of the day, but also to know that like it would feel appreciated. Yeah. You know, sometimes you got. She, that was a text DM call. It was not, it was it was a nice thing to happen. Yeah. But I mean she was actually was quite aggressive about with it to be honest. Was, but you know what? That's what happens when you actually have the dopest customers. You have the we have the best customers. Honestly, we, we put it out there, you just get the best customers over time. But you know what? Um, everyone just likes to actually feel valued and like yeah. she had yeah, that yeah. value where you know it comes in the box, the packaging, the yeah, you know, even the extras. So like, that's why she felt like the need to actually say, "Look, um, this is this is far too much for, for so little." Take my money. But you know what? It's okay. <laughs> values have values, and you'll be fine. It's like it, it was a no-brainer when you have values what to do. Like, the slide. Is there someone with a hand up? Okay, Hanson, go for it. How do we see if someone's got a hand up? Um. Oh. Or does someone have the hand up? No one has the. No, it's cool. No, okay. All right, cool. Okay, okay so um, what I would like to say is like, this is a quote from me, so I'll say it. Be known for that one thing and then grow from there. And like, my point is this it's like, um, in the early days, I only had one bag in three different sizes and that's how I started business. And that's how I lived on for years until recently. But like, I got known for like, oh, you're a bag guy. I like your bags. And like, we'll get orders from like, not just um, the actual wood sack itself, but also we'll get approached by companies and businesses and individuals to actually do their manufacturing as well. Because, well, we just got to become that bag guy. You know what I mean, it's like if you can actually make them kind of bags and like the bags that was also been doing, it's like people with interesting ideas and crazy ones that bags that split apart, teddy bears that can like, you know, and turn yeah. into bags, refrigerating, refrigerating compartments, compartments. you know, it's like the solar powered, like music tambourine. We had so <laughs> many custom orders and, and ideas from people. But like they knew us as bag people. Did someone turn the, the wood into like a snare drum? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Put like it's a snare a drum. attachment on the back. It of was great. We had we've had a lot. Really? But like, yeah, but that wasn't our customer. That was then what they did themselves. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They customized. But like, um, yeah, we just get a lot of like um, businesses reaching out to us, uh, individuals reaching out to us, um, because you just became known for that one thing. And when you actually focus on one thing, it actually improves your skill. Um, it improves your. Um, your actual passion as well, mm-hmm. you know what I mean, in what, in what you're doing. It's like, how can I put it? Uh, what's the word now? It allows you the, the, the sort of the, the headspace to, to focus on, as Paul mentioned before, to focus on the details. Like you don't have to, 
making stuff can get quite yeah. complicated. This is, a, this is a ton of processes to make something. Well, we became an expert in our field. That's what mm. happens when you actually focus on one a thing. A very niche field of yeah. wood bags. <laughs> well, like, yeah, because, you, you, I mean, for example, it's like with students here, it's like you could just be really good at making T-shirts, just become the best at making that one T-shirt and then mm. grow from there. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like, or, and then anything else you make is a complex T-shirt, kind of like how Just to carry your, you know, you want to take your laptop out of the bag. It's still protected, right? Mm -hmm. You know, you just have um, and if the accessories are kind of complement to like what we do. But like, yeah, uh, yeah, you don't have to actually do everything. For example, um, I had a shop. I had a shop, and uh, yeah, I, I forgot to add that in until I answered. Oh, the shop. Yeah, the shop in the early days. I had the shop for like three years. I only ended up, I only wanted it for three months, but it ended up being like. Two years. It's a two, two year pop up. The two year pop up. You know what I mean? Which was like every single day. It was great. But long story short, um, I had a lot of people asking me, hey, can I get stocked in here? Um, a lot of the time it was a no. But like, um, there was a one occasion, there was a guy, he made the greatest, he, he made really nice um, tracksuits, like top and bottom, fantastic tracksuits. And um, I agreed, you know what, you can come in, you can stock your tracksuits in here. And he's like, great, give me like three weeks because I need to order hats, I need to get t-shirts, I need to get hoodies, I need to get like these bangles, I need to get, I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. Just focus on becoming the best tracksuit maker ever. You do not need those additionals if it doesn't work for you. Just focus on becoming known for that one thing. Just make the tracksuits. And you and I guarantee you grow. And I showed them my wall, and all I had was like bags, just the wood sacks in three different sizes, and and those was doing each day. So like, um, it's important just to actually focus on your field, and just get known for that one thing, and then grow. And it really will give you a solid platform. So now just a quick look at some other brands, and where they started. Um, some well-known brands. But yeah, so first one, Nike. Um, a running shoe way back in 1964. That's the mm -hmm. first one. You know, and then like they started as just like one thing, and that was athletic equipment. And athletic equipment, we mean shoes. You know what I mean? And they started on the University of Oregon. They're still there. In fact, no, wait, they brought the campus next to it, didn't they? The huge? They're, yeah, they're, they're, well, yeah, they're yeah. global now. Yeah, they're but. global now. They're now a global um, behemoth of like athleticism, of footwear and development te technology. But not only that, they're also on the forefront of fashion. True. Can you believe it? And like, yeah. but they started just basically doing that one thing. They become known for one thing, and that's like athletic footwear, mm -hmm. particularly running. Um, next one, Hanson. Levi's. Yeah, man. Levi's. Jeans, everyone knows Levi's. No, I mean, if you don't, don't. If, you, if you don't, if, if you don't, don't know, know Levi's, Levi's, I don't know if where you, don't you know are. Levi's, we might have to leave. I mean, in fact, um, no, if you don't um, know Levi's, what are you wearing, man? It's like, sure. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, basically, long story short, they was known for um, really good fashion or really good jeans. Not, not the fact that, like, they look good. It was because they worked well. They became known in their had the technology. Yes, the they was putting boots on jeans that reinforced the, the pockets and yeah. the yeah. weak points. And like that's what how they grew because like those really good at their field. Those those were the best at it. And then like as you can see here, we've got like advertisements of um of women um, wearing the jeans and like for us that was like that's that's leisure wear but for them that's that's still work wear yeah. back in the 1940s yeah. you know what I mean but like other than that yeah they just knew their niche and they doubled down and they grew into this another fashion brand but like originally they would they just started from work wear and like it's kind of like us we're actually saying look we only started with like three bags yeah you know three bags the same type of bag but just, just in three different sizes yeah. Yeah, you know I mean, and like you just you can actually start from anywhere. So like, um, yeah, you don't have to have a lot of stuff. You don't have to have a whole collection because if anything, it's not even sustainable anyway. You know what I mean? It's yeah, like in the beginning. Yeah. In the beginning, it's yeah. like for us, it's like 
I had my sister, she still did fashion. It's like, so what are you doing for next season? I'm like, next season? Check. <laughs> I never came up through fashion, but like, for me, I find that kind of like, I'm making a staple. I'm not trying to make a, a fashion statement. Yeah, it's a staple. It's tomorrow. like, it's, yeah, I'm yeah. trying to actually keep it going in terms of like, we just want it to be, um, what's the word, Hanson? Um, my mind's gone blank. <laughs> But I think to, just to tie to tie that back quickly to the the John Lasseter quote about quality being the best business plan for Levi's like that literally made their business like they focused on making quality jeans as Paul said there were other jean manufacturers out there but they weren't Levi's and everyone knew that and the reason they're still here today is is because of that they still make quality jeans. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Okay. Let's move on to the next one. Okay, is that the next one, Hanson? This is all right. Oh no! Oh no! We're doing this one. Oh no! Oh, eBay. eBay. Our our eBay experience. Ah. Oh, so I'll, I'll I'll give a brief brief background into this. Paul Paul hates some of the stuff that's coming up. Oh man, I do. Um, I do. Yeah, for those of you who don't know, eBay ran a campaign in Wolverhampton last from end of 2018 to the end of 2019, um, called the Retail Revival, which was about boosting. Re physical retail and online retail in Wolverhampton. Um, they've run it before in America and Wolverhampton was the first sort of test bed for the UK. And we were lucky enough to be selected as their as the face for the campaign as of last year. So as you can see in some of these pictures, um, we had what? a whole raft of people come yeah. to our workshop. We had ITV News, BBC News. Um, like main TV news there. Main TV news. I never even got to Star, see it. B <laughs> Newspapers, BBC radio. radio. Oh, um, gosh, we had like the was... vice president of eBay. We're still cool with Rob. Rob, if you're listening, hi. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think Rob's at um, the university. Is he? Uh, oh, Joe. I don't, I don't know if he's there. Oh, yeah. Well, we'll but, play uh, back to him, man. Maybe he's, maybe. he's cool, man. Rob's a geezer, man. He's, he's the dopest. And like we made a lot, you know what? We made a lot of connections through that. We yeah. made uh, yeah. friends. We made networking, and we really got introduced to Wolverhampton. Um, and it's it's the kind of publicity and stuff that you you, you can't pay for. Like yeah. clearly, we do not have the budget for ITV News and BBC News and TV cameras. As in, like national paper press, national right? paper press, <laughs> billboards. Like we, we, yeah, that's not us. That was but, not us. I mean, the thing what I found was we had to build a press area. Remember, we had the second workshop and we, we built. Pre a I press mean, area. Pre press area is a bit is a bit stronger. That term. was that that was, was, you did put out like press. Things it was a like that to make sure with some that, chairs yeah. and some flyers. Yeah. Presses and, and water and stuff. You know, and yeah. tables. Ka yeah. Ish. <laughs> that we had to yo, we were, yo, that Threw was some that. blankets over yeah, the, it. the jump in the background. <laughs> it was yeah. really cool. It's like that that was like really surreal for us. Well, but yeah, but anyway. but long story short, um, we weren't ready. Mm. We weren't ready for this level of exposure. Um it was a great opportunity. It was a, it was an amazing opportunity, amazing experience. I think but, um, I think it was because I wasn't told about. I mean, we didn't was, even know it was eBay at first. Anyway, when it was a lot of it was classified. Yeah. Literally, like half an hour until we were told eBay were coming. Like um, sugar. And we, we thought we like, should probably Hoover. Do some things. Um, yeah. So even with all of that, eBay's full might of their team getting everything online for us, sending over um, videographers from America. <laughs> Um, yeah, we got a lot. Right, we we got a lot of uh, help. We got a ton of help. It's like uh, what happened. Um, they took our products from um, the website and put it onto eBay. You know what I'm saying? We 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 they controlled a lot. Even we had help with our our um, what's it called? Someone did a template for our, our Yeah, we got a custom template made. Um, so our store stood out from everyone else's, um, and that was for free from a yeah, company called we, Fruition. We got um, a lot of like uh, what did what else did we get? Uh, given access really to anything you wanted. Anything, top top seller accounts, anchor stores. We got they gave they gave us the works, absolute works, yeah. and it was it was great. It was a they, huge amount of support from them. Yeah, oh yeah, we did. Um, it was fantastic. I enjoyed it. I had um, a really, and and then you know, we even got asked out to go and visit the the headquarters. And yeah, yeah, was, yeah. yeah. Know, article in the Guardian. The always, yeah, yeah, eBay headquarters. They kept on giving us a lot of attention and promoted us very heavily, and and everyone else from Wolverhampton as well. It was yeah, that's true. It wasn't right. just us. It was yeah. people who also the people on, on the program as yeah, well. Yeah, we're not getting big headed, but yeah, I'm saying we. <laughs> they, did, they, did, they did help everyone else out. However, um, 
you know what I'm saying? Uh, oh, you have to do that thing. Even though we brought that and all that, stuff, um, we kind of, we kind of uh, failed. Yeah, still failed. Yeah, we still um, failed. Yeah, um, like can we say uh, some timble with some <laughs> No, uh, <laughs> no, um, you know what, mate? No, no I wasn't saying we failed. I was saying you either win or you learn. You know what I'm saying? Maybe it's a bit we harsh. Learned. Yeah, we learned. Yeah, we learned. Yeah, and, um, just got learned wrong on these slides. Did I? Um, <laughs> it's, it says failed, but we actually learned. So, oh yeah, we yeah. learned. Oh, I see. Yeah, <laughs> I see there. That, that that's a massive spelling mistake. What I know thing. it's got an F in it and everything. It's got an F. It's, anyway, it's got an L. <laughs> Could just put that, cover the F and the A and the I, and then lead. Like there we go. It's yeah. Close enough. Close. close enough. <laughs> well, you fixed it. Okay. Fixed it. But long, I'm like, long story short, um, yeah, we kind of did fail, and I, I'd say it was a numerous amount of factors that actually like got on to us and like yeah. for example um we did not understand the market for example um <clears throat> when you go on ebay you know what i mean um what happens is you usually going on ebay to solve a problem to buy a particular item mm -hmm. that's low air well not low cost you know what i mean or, or but high value you want the best quality for the lowest cost for the yeah. lowest cost yeah and um, I feel like um, taking a 105 pound backpack called a wood sack and then putting it onto a site where people yeah. are searching for a bargain. Yeah. It kind of was kind of asking for it. Yeah, <laughs> it was a bit rushed. I yeah. mean, I mean, we I were mean, a brand new to eBay. No one had ever heard of us before. Yeah. Um, the bag was weird. It's got wood on it. It's Who got, does that? Yeah, yeah, isn't it? Um, Especially the eBay customers. They were like, what is this? What is that? Why? <laughs> Just get, get the feedback. Why? <laughs> but like, uh, you know what? It was the wrong price as well. Because like £105 for a bag that no one knows and no feedback. It's like, yeah. why? So like, it was probably the wrong price structure. And we did have a tote bag, but that top bag was also kind of priced high as well. Mm -hmm. So um, regardless of the help and the accessories and, you know, and everything we got from them, it was just, it was just too new. You know what I mean? No sales history. And also, I feel like we never actually took a lot of opportunity as well from, um, from the yeah, publicity. We yeah, we didn't make full usage of the publicity that eBay was getting. We we're, were still acting like a small company, like, oh, yeah, okay, we just wanted to, you know, it's just... It's so, what, TV? <laughs> no, <laughs> it was a lot, but, like, you know, I mean, on that day, you remember when uh, the TV came through and, like, we had, like, about 9,000 views on our... 9,000 hits on our store that's in one yeah, hour. On the website. You know, yeah. That was crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Our sales, which was fantastic. Uh, still spending that money. But, like, it was, it was, it was, a, good, it was a good time. But like, um, I feel like our problem is, or what we did wrong was, yeah, we never actually really, it wasn't eBay's fault, it was our fault because we never actually pushed ourselves. And also yeah. we had, we still was doing our usual day-to-day -day things in terms of like manufacturing for B2B. We had a lot of clients then. And also we was um, still working out on our own little things and mm -hmm. doing various projects. So like, we almost, that's it, we'll make eBay that we have a cold That being take it sitting down though you know um here we go with next slide come on hansen let's show them how we made it work we managed to turn it around yeah it was not the end of the story yeah um we um took no um we took, we took the reins we took the reins we learned we, we took the time to learn about the ebay platform um we yeah we got involved we we had numerous calls with with ebay's customer service they gave us access to their full like concierge service so we could call them whenever and then also we looked into like the type of customer that was actually using um, the platform because mm -hmm. like understanding the platform i think it was the key so like understanding the type of customer that actually uses ebay where they're actually looking for a bargain but they don't want nothing cheap they want something they want the best they want quality they want value but i really Fair price, not a low price neither. They want it at a fair price. They're prepared to pay for that. And so like um, it was actually developing products as well just for eBay that kind of actually worked. Then also we actually created um, for ourselves, we actually created a platform where we was actually focused on our costs. So like we wasn't actually gonna lose too much money mm -hmm. just actually focused on that. So we, we come from like a little mid-range 
So like eBay was kind of like it's kind of low end a bit, and like we had to actually start yeah. like cutting prices just to actually make it work. So like we did actually do a little bit of strategics on that. Also, um, I'll say we competed. We learned to compete for the first time um, against other competitors. It's like we, as you know, we was actually creating one bag in three different sizes, and it was had wood on it. Where are you going to go for a wood sack? To us, no one else sells it, so we didn't have to compete. So I'll say for the first time, we had to compete in a open playing field. Mm -hmm. And um, and so we like to actually compete on quality rather than price. Because if you start competing on price, what happens is it's just the it's just it's the it's the start to the bottom really. But like yeah. when you compete yeah. on quality, well then it, it's a no-brainer. You can either have a cheap one that's gonna fall apart in like two days or you can have something pay a little bit more and it's gonna last a little longer. Well in our case, less longer than the longer. <laughs> the longer and for life. Yeah, for life. You know, but like most importantly, we took the risk. Um, a lot of entrepreneurs, I suppose, I think we got comfortable in like the B2B and like making our own thing. So we took the risk where we're gonna do no um, B2B uh, clients when mm -hmm. you're just gonna really double down and focus all in for the rest of the year on eBay. And um, that's what we did. So like um, our lifeline got snapped and um, we, we, we told the guys, listen, you know, waiting list or we'll, we'll, we took them to Zahi. So like Zahi took our manufacturing costs. I mean, manufacturing, Zahi manufacturing for us, but we still had a little cut on it in terms of like, you know, I mean, the, the, the unit costs. And um, yeah, we, we just really doubled down on it. And also we advertised as well. True. We did advertise. True. We started doing a lot of money on the advertising directly just for eBay. So, um, so had some in a word, yeah. Um, innovation saved us, to be honest. Yeah. Um, as Paul mentioned, you know, originally it was one bag in three different sizes. Now we are very far from that. Yeah, that's um, only a snippet. Um, I on ourselves yeah and um, so we designed for ourselves and um we created for the first time a non-wood backpack which is called the merchant which interestingly um is our best selling bag so, so, so we but yeah you can it. see tote bags lots of different types duffel bags as you saw in the whole video from before um laptop sleeves a yeah. backpack without wood who would and have even it? like um a really competitive um a tote bag but we thought we'll go a little different and use it half black mm -hmm. um and it's and it, i'm not sure if we, i'm not sure about the sales in that one but we do sell a few of them each on ebay but yeah our best seller is basically who knew the tote bag you know what I mean? it's like it really has um pushed it so on ebay we just really killed it on the tote bag um but other, other than that we just got to learn about the customer and here we actually just designed and developed a lot of like accessories because mm -hmm. we knew that accessories because like we understood that with eBay is a certain price point that really does really well and that is um what's the price point again 20 pounds so mm -hmm. things under 20 pounds uh, okay cool yeah um yeah we might speed up a bit through some of these I'm conscious we want to get to the question and answers at the end yeah so we might just... we've, we've been told Pick up, pick, <laughs> up, pick up the pace. Now I've been told. <laughs> <laughs> we just got shouted at, so. Um, yeah. Um, it's not going to move. Okay, so. Wait, let's go for this one. Our design process, um, I thought I'd call it the case of the tote. Just to actually get to understand how we work and how we develop things. Basically, um, long story short, oh, hold on, let me get my notes because I'm very forgetful. Oh, there we go. Is it this yeah, one? 27. There you go. Number 27. Go for it, Hudson. Yeah, the case of the tote bag. Um, it's, a, it's a very, very simple bag in, a, in, in its concepts. Yeah, a tote um, is a very simple, but like, if you think about it, there's a lot of like. Um, if I feel the reason why it is, um, it's generally it seems to be just a, a, a go to bag for everyone. It's simple, it gets the job done. It's versatile, it's very, very versatile. Yeah. Um, but for us, the is problems, any, yeah, the problems were is that insane is what's on the market. Um, generally, 
Um, tote bags are inexpensive. Yeah, they're they're cheaply made. Cheap to make. Not water resistant. Generally don't last very long. It's like a, literally a tea towel. You know I mean? Literally with handles. Yeah, yeah, and when we saw these on eBay, they were selling in the thousands. Yeah. Like the thousands. And we're like, right, well, since tote bags sell a lot, well, we'll, 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 we'll do some ourselves. <laughs> we'll, yeah, we'll, we'll try and do ourselves ourselves. But we understood the market where, like, well, why do people actually buy a tote bag, really? And because it's, well, cost wise, it's inexpensive, mm-hmm. but like, and also, um, it, it, it's versatile. It's like you can do a lot of things with tote bag. Yeah. You can use it for shopping. You can, Put your laptop in it if you really want to do it, but like um, you can use it for generally. It's a it's a go-to bag. Yeah, you know what I mean. What people actually go through. So understanding the reason why they actually um, why people buy that, well, then it actually enabled us to actually understand how to actually develop and um, well develop the best fits and make it sure that we can actually make something that we can keep compete against. But yeah, took it back. To- Keep something that is a go-to bag, but just just elevate it to that next level. Um, cost was a big, big factor in this because, as Paul mentioned before, like we've never really had to compete against other people before. Like the, the bags that we made were so unique that there was no real benchmark. Yeah. This was the first time where we were on a platform where we had to actually assess what we were doing against other people. Yeah. What prices were they using? What costs? What fabrics? Yeah. What all that kind of stuff, yeah, and it so was a steep the, learning curve. No, it's not only the cost for like our manufacturing, but also the cost for like, well, what are these customers prepared to pay for? It, yeah. And like the cost yeah. of like what everyone else is using. So like, yeah, because there's no point actually. I know that these guys want to actually buy a bag that's um, what is it? Some of them tote bags that we just showed is like three pounds. Three pounds yeah. for a tote bag. I mean, yeah, it's like what kind of child is making that for like a couple of pence? So it's like if you think about it, these things aren't even sustainable. You know, it's yeah. like if it's yeah. that inexpensive, it's it's a sustainable issue, really, because mm-hmm. like it, it's not going to last long. You'll get another one. So like we've got to teach the audience that, you know what, you can actually make an inexpensive bag that's going to last a long time. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So um, but other than that, go for it, Hanson. So the result, let's do this, this again. The result was our tote bag that we dubbed the record tote. Yeah, we made it in two different sizes and long story short, um, what is it now? Um, it's got Kodora fabric, so it's um, got really durable water resistance. Mm-hmm. Um, but like it, it's durable because like you can rub it against things, it's not gonna tear, unlike um, those tea towels that they call a tote bag, <laughs> our competitors do. Um, we use um, Neo, what's it called then? The, the webbing there. The polypropylene. Polypropylene webbing. It gets comfortable the more you use it, to be honest, but like um, there's various types of um, uh, polypropylene, but like we use a really stiff type, so it's gonna. We, we basically designed it for longevity. Yeah, over engineered the whole thing. Yeah, so like this thing is tough, it's double sealed and top, so like we top sew the thing and then like no, it's sewn at the top first, and then like we fold, fold it, it over, over and, and then top, top stitch. stitch it twice. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, it's it's also <laughs> comes with an additional shoulder strap. Yeah, it didn't like, originally. Yeah, and then we had so many customers come back and say, Oh, oh I only bought this I, I thought it came with the strap, so in the end we ended up putting the price up and just including the strap. Yeah, and it worked out. And then also um, the actual line in itself, so the line in is kind of water resistant too. Yeah. But like it, it seems to work out, but like the, the material selection for this was just basically what's the most um, effective way that we can actually compete. And um, the cost wise, it did cost us um, I don't know the cost on this. So it cost a little bit more to make than probably I'm guessing the you know the, the ones that they the top but, leg, yeah. As we mentioned before, like having the foundation of the, the wood sets, we knew the kinds of fabrics that would work for the for the principles we wanted the bag to have. So we knew about water resistance, we knew about the lining, we knew that we didn't necessarily want to pad it for cost reasons, yeah. but but what we ended up with was probably the most over-engineered, simple tote bag yeah. that's on eBay for sale at the moment. And you know what? We are appreciated for it. But like, um, then after we made it, um, go for the thingy, the next slide, Hanson, real quick. Give you that thing in the jig. Uh-huh. So yeah. But yeah, we basically marketed it. So not only was the design there for actually, um, What's it called now? I'll say 
just the actual its practicalities, it gave us something to market. So like with that, we actually marketed how um, it can be used, how functional it is, mm -hmm. how versatile it is. I mean, that's just shoulder strap anyway, but that's, uh, you know what I mean? It, is, it makes it even more versatile with, yep. the, with the D string, the D rings. No other talk back can do that. But like, um, it's just simple, simplistic, yet yeah, it works. Yep. And, it, and that's the whole point that we wanted to actually get with that. But like, yeah, it just gave us something to actually market. And these are the kind of ads that was putting out on Instagram and Facebook. And um, it got sales, it's like, it, it did really work. It really speaking to people. It also started a conversation as well, because people who maybe were a bit 50-50 about tote bags, maybe they'd had tote bags in the past that didn't last very long. They snapped yeah. on the way to work, broke the laptop, whatever. Mm -hmm. We were just about like, yeah, another tote bag. Actually getting people Yeah, so these are just because like we sell hundreds of these a lot each month. Yeah, <laughs> and not only wait, we sell wait, wait we sell not only the thing is we sell not only um, tote bags on eBay but on our website and we sell them as wholesale as well. Yeah, so it's actually just doing this one simple bag. It actually we can sell for two different no three different platforms and then like B two B because like the businesses. They purchased from us so they can actually have blanks. I mean, there was one guy, he actually bought the, the tote bags and put Supreme on them. You know, he's like, I really love your quality. <laughs> I mean, Hanson, read out some of them, them uh, quotes right there. But yeah, we've, just in case you're a bit too small for people to see, um, the bottom one in the corner, we had a wholesale order for a, um, a sort of quite a high end um, cafe eatery in London, and they ordered 50 from us. Um, and didn't realize that that's only the shoulder strap separately, but again, okay, I'll time. mention that, yeah, yeah, we, 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 our, our time's up, our time's, now. Up. Our our time's up. up, our time's up, but but just one thing, one more thing, Hanson, Hanson, do this one right there, that one right there, go for it, because like the normally from Apple, I can't let them see me like that, you know what I'm let, let, oh, let, let me let me go through, hang on, yeah, hang go, on. go 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 for it, it's not changing, it's let's not changing. do it. It's not changing. No, it's not changing. There we go. All right, there, there, do it. There you go. Just, just leave you with that though. There, boom. I'm like, okay, so it was, I was just actually trying to actually relate and like show you the journey from like when I used to actually work plotting my thing from Apple. You know what I mean? Now I'm like, you know what I mean? It's, uh, how can I put it? I'm validated. Not that I need this validation yet on a couple of magazines and that, but like just actually show anyone can do it. Anyway, it's, it's really it, that simple. So long as you're actually passionate and you define what you're gonna do, um, you don't have to, there's no direct route path. You can just go any way you want. There's no direct route. Just be flexible, take opportunities, take chances, take risks, and um, and you'll get recognized for it. So yeah, I think, yeah, we're, we're officially out of time. And I proved um, my sister wrong. Look at that, I'm on the magazine. <laughs> 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 I proved her wrong. <laughs> But yeah, that's it really. Uh, next one, Hanson, questions? Um, yes, yeah, so I think I'm not sure how much time we're going to have for, for, well, for questions. Well, yes, you've got about less than a bit 15 minutes. Okay, right? go for Because it. I bet there's going to be questions. 15 minutes for questions. Okay, so we're now moving on to questions. I didn't want them to end, guys, but I just wanted to make sure that you had enough time for questions. <laughs> All right, I'm just going to show the conversation, see if there's any questions here yet. No, no questions. Oh, good. Okay, so is there any questions? I don't see any hands up. I think Amy's typing in the chat box. Brilliant. Oh, Amy, I see, I see a hand. <laughs> Hi, I thought it'd be easier to speak than type. <laughs> I think you might be right. I just wanted to did you do <laughs> they approached us we our name was put forward we didn't for even know we did not know we didn't know and they selected us they came to visit they selected us as as the, the business they wanted to, to front the campaign and because we were the, with the face of the campaign we were kind of forced onto ebay yeah. not that we were against it it was 
we never really we, we discussed did. eBay before. Yeah, but we said now we're, we're, we're fine really with Amazon. Did. We'll be on Amazon and it's fine. But like Amazon took a lot of time, and then yeah. we got on Amazon, and then like eBay Amazon, came. Through. Amazon decided that we weren't on Amazon. Yeah, um, <laughs> but like eBay was like really cool. But like I had reserve reservations from eBay because like you know at the same time no no good product or no really good value built brand sells on eBay. So why would we do it? But like um, I would say it's changed. The whole platform has changed. The type of people, or the customers that do go on eBay, it's evolved in terms of like the sales we get from eBay from customers are like really young professionals or or, or, or late professionals, mm -hmm. mature before mature people. Like we sell to doctors and um, all sorts of like um, types of like really genuine nice people. Yeah, you know? and it's been great. So yeah, in answer to your question, it, it wasn't part of our plan, although we weren't against it. But yeah, it was it was eBay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Amy. Any who's next? Alima. Hi. I just wanted to do, uh, actually, you know, is it better to actually find someone who's uh, to collaborate and work towards something? Because you, if you haven't got enough time to research and to, you know, to uh, start something at the beginning, if you think you're worried and you think you can't handle it, um, rather than just going for it for yourself, basically. Um, this is interesting because like we do a lot of B2B with um, customers and then like we we have um, a service where we actually do help um, a lot of like individuals. I mean the latest one is like that young guy has got a product and uh, we can't tell you about it because he made us sign a DA form but like uh, we become his um, literally his design team mm -hmm. and like we yeah. help him out and so I'd say it really is important that um, I mean, for me anyway, I never actually developed my bag to the point where it is until I actually got experience from Zara. You know what I mean? Look, right? I mean, thinking about rivets and, and, and screws until I met him. And so, like, having someone that's on the same um, path or the same mindset that you want to achieve. Um, it just brings a new element, it brings new ideas um, that you can bounce back off and like so definitely it's worth actually having um, someone to work with to actually um, that, that shares your same passion. Mm -hmm. Well you mentioned B2B which is like obviously little lingo, do you want to explain? Oh, yeah. um, B2B oh. is basically um, business, to business. business to business, so like um, a lot of businesses um, we, we work with they, they come to us, we don't actually seek them out. And it's interesting because we don't even advertise. Um, they just yeah. reach out and find us or they just ask questions. And so like, yeah, so that's how it works. So that's B2B, but like definitely um, it, it is worth finding someone that has the same mindset as you and the same passion. And um, honestly, it's, it, it's, a, it, it's great. Cause I'm literally you, right? You, and and you, man, <laughs> it's great. Okay, so a question that's come online is like, what is the common issue or stumbling block you come across and how do you overcome it? Okay, um, a common issue, basically, long story short, I'd I mean, say... Other, other than COVID? Um... Other than COVID! <laughs> how to overcome um... issues. Basically, like I was saying, I'm not sure to say at the beginning, but like, we have a set of rules and regulations and like, we have values. So like, having a set of values helps determine how you're going to solve a problem. For, for example, um, slow motion better than no motion is one of our values and rules, which helps us not to actually um, go too fast and break things. I hate that that phrase, but like you're supposed to slow down, enjoy the journey and think about things and then it will happen in your own time. But like, yeah, um, having a set of rules, values helps you make a decision and that's how. But like in terms of like, it depends on the solution then actually or the problem. Yeah, because so obviously you're going to have the day-to-day -day stuff like, you know, one of the things that irritates us most is when the bobbin runs out on the sewing machine. Oh yeah. <laughs> and there is no warning. <laughs> and there's no warning. You've done the perfect going. top stitch and then you just, yeah. didn't actually sew anything. I feel like but, sometimes uh, it's like, or oh, we make a mistake on a bag and it needs to go out, um, but it has to go out soon, real quick, like that day. Mm -hmm. It has happened. Um, my value is I'll call the customer and let them know and keep them informed on what's happening. Because like, if you don't keep them informed, there's nothing worse than like customers to get like, well, what's happening? Why is it here? Blah blah. Just constantly let them know. Let them know. So and generally, like, people will 
they'll give you the benefit of the doubt if they know that you're you're working on it you've got a solution yeah. it's going to come it might not be today but we're working and we're going to definitely so Um, Claire Bealy. Hi guys, I just I just wanted to pick your brains about the the manufacturing. Is it just you yeah. two that that manufacture them all? Yeah, I yep. mean we missed out the section where it was actually going to explain all that. But like um, how it is is that it's just us two at the moment doing the manufacturing. And, Get me sleep. Uh, yeah, but like how, <laughs> but how it works sometimes. out. How, well, sometimes yeah, <laughs> but how it works out is like we mainly do the manufacturing. But it works like this. Um, you have we've organised, very organised. So like um, like I was saying in the beginning, um, Zahid taught me how to do production. So when you have production, you have stages and you have set um, 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 processes. Mm -hmm. And the process that we have is basically we make parts. So like we make a lot of parts. So when we get orders in, we assemble them. And then sometimes we keep the we keep parts, so we keep um, the bags that we know sell out. We have those in stock, but like mainly we keep parts ready for manufacturing because like we're trying to actually build a business here, a company, a, a workshop where everything's done in house. Um, there's no way that we'll actually send anything out to China yeah. or, yeah, or it Singapore. Gets, it gets messy. No, we just want to actually. In fact, people come to us. And that's been from China and says, oh, can you put things right? So like, uh, <laughs> yeah. made in China, can it you was, fix it? yeah, like that guy where he had his bag made that you designed the bag. He went off to China and then came back a year later and says, look, like the, the maid it decides a sleeping bag. Can you, can you change it? <laughs> and so like we have things like that. But like long story short, yeah, we're actually developing and uh, trying to actually grow our manufacturing base here. And so, so that, that's so why. Um, sorry, carry on. Yeah, so that's why we actually just set out um, a procedure in manufacturing. So like have parts and when we have parts, we assemble. So everything's bespoke and um, that way we can control the quality. There's nothing worse than like making the parts and then assembling because like what can happen is you lose control of the quality because you're in a rush to get things out. So like uh, we like to take our time to make the products and um, we even let people know um, online when they order a bag if it's not in stock, please allow seven days um, before um, it reaches you. So in, in the future, obviously, um, you, you won't be able to keep up with demand. You'll just extend the workforce, will you? Well, yeah, we, we're always ultimately. trying to extend the workforce. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? But like what, I, what we understand is like we have to train. So like um, we like to train people. So like, um, we did train one person, which is gone. But like, um, but like, um, <laughs> you know, it's like, how can I put it? It's like, you just want to work with the right people, like someone said before, that are passionate. Because if they're passionate like you, you know, I mean, they'll, they'll, it doesn't matter about what time of day it is. It's like, you know, yeah. they'll just be focused on the quality and getting things out rather than Jack Emmerdale's on, I've got to go. So um, <laughs> <laughs> it's like, you just, you just want to actually just make sure that you're working with the right individuals and they're passionate as, as well as you because like you know what i feed off hansen if i'm down hansen me up and if i'm and you'll never to that thank you claire no sharon have you got a question yes yes i have um I've been incredibly uh, inspired and I think that after a presentation there's normally a whole raft of questions but I think you've answered so many of those questions along the way in terms of um, <laughs> your journey, the um, the ups and downs and all that kind of stuff. Um, I'm going to be a little bit cheeky here because I'm going to say do you ever work with universities? Um, do you take students on placement? And have you ever thought about sort of collaborating and working on a project with students at the University of Wolverhampton across fashion textiles and product design um, for, to perhaps thinking about some uh, it's, prototypes? It's, it's, funny, it's funny you should say that because <laughs> pre-COVID, pre we had some grandmaster plans to be more involved with Wolverhampton University. Yeah. We had 
been to the campus, we've visited, we've met um, course leaders and lecturers and all this it kind of stuff. It was a great time. I and mean, the plan was we were going to be more involved. I mean, that university there, Wolverhampton, yo, you guys could build a car. Yeah. Like from start to finish, you guys have got a lot of facilities. I'm like, I'm surprised what you guys can come up with, man. It's amazing. So definitely, we did, we did want to, but um, it's the COVID situation. Yeah, it kind of put a, put a damper on things. Yeah, but, we um, did have plans. I'm pretty sure we did have plans. Yeah, I mean, I suppose it's probably a good point. I don't know if you want to introduce. I mean, George. this place. Yeah. Um, I mean, um, even in this place, it's like was actually planning to actually have students come through. Um, can we actually show them the building, this this whole, we can lift up the, this, this place where we're in, this is not our workshop, <laughs> this is basically an extension of the workshop where we have, uh, we have tables with sewing machines and these, are, these, don't, these guys can't come in, <laughs> they're not a part of it, but like we've got sewing machines, we've got walking foot sewing machines, um, this is a cylinder arm, we have, uh, we got all, this is my bottle of water, uh, <laughs> over lockdown and space. Basically, long story short, this is um, a workshop studio that we just wanted to actually promote and work with students um, and work with the local community so they can come in and, and hire the place. Because I know that from when I started to actually sell bags, I was doing it at home and doing my little flat. I wish I had space. <laughs> I wish I had a space like this, really, so I could actually come in and just like just do my mass manufacturing, really. So like, um, yeah, we do want to work with students, and we do want to do a project. And if they can't come, if we can't come there, they're they're welcome to come here. Okay. Oh, that's that's great news. I'm just, you know, it's my my mind's going into overdrive because of some of the facilities we've got on the fourth floor for the wood and all that kind of stuff. And we've got some great textile designers, and of course the fashion designers uh, um, who you've you've got in front of you here as well. Um, so I think the the potential is enormous. So I think this is the for, for me. I could see this the beginning of a um, a very sort of lucrative and um supportive creative uh, friendship for for both parties so thank you so much um for allowing us to to hear your story uh, and i for one feel particularly inspired and i have to to leave this meeting now but i tell you really really uh, impressed with you guys